Researchers have not yet been able to say definitively what the cause of Alzheimer's disease is. But among the candidate causes discussed is oxidation in the body, also called oxidative stress. In this video, I want to survey the antioxidant potential of 16 different herbs that you might have on your spice rack at home. Let's get into it. Oxidative stress dovetails with Alzheimer's disease in several respects. The first one is that patients who already have Alzheimer's disease have problems with accelerated oxidation. They have more oxidative stress in their brains. But you'll also recall that with Alzheimer's disease, one of the primary characteristics is that there is an abnormal accumulation of protein deposits. So beta amyloid protein clumps in between neurons and tau protein aggregates inside of neurons and other brain areas. This abnormal deposition of protein has been speculated to be the result of increased free radicals or a decrease in antioxidant defenses inside of some people's bodies. In other words, it's the result of oxidation. But that raises the question, are antioxidant therapies for Alzheimer's disease viable? And one of the interesting aspects of that is that various herbs, for example, rosemary, sage, oregano, we're going to get into 16 different herbs just in this video. Those can be excellent sources for antioxidants, and many of them, as we said, can be found on your spice rack. Now, I don't want to play favorites in terms of brands here. The brand Fresh Jacks has assorted herbs. Here's one from McCormick. You can see 24 herbs offered in this set. What I was concerned with in trying to come up with these 16 was herbs that you were likely to have already on your shelf. However, having said that, I should add that one way of viewing this video is simply as the kinds of herbs you might want to collect for yourself. You might want to create a set based upon the list of herbs that I am about to say. What I was attempting to do in sort of breaking the video up into two parts was in part one, this part, I'm going to try and stick with herbs that are likely to be in these introductory sets. And like I said, Spice Islands has a set. We looked at McCormick, Nomu, I hope I'm saying that right, Simply Organic. There are a number of these. So that's one way to look at the information is what do you, are you likely to have? And then in a subsequent video, I will add 16 additional herbs that you might want to collect that might not be in your starter set, but are still certainly available. Right off the bat, cautionary note, obviously I'm not guaranteeing that you are going to have these on your spice rack. Various starter sets are going to include some elements that I don't talk about in this video. And almost certainly there's going to be some element I do talk about that you don't have, or that isn't in some particular starter set that you have your eye on. So please bear that in mind. Also, some of these herbs, you might want to think about growing them on your own. Maybe not all of them are conducive depending on the area that you live in the world. I would expect many people watching this video, if they have caretaking duties for somebody who has Alzheimer's, they might have time constraints that prevent them from devoting themselves to a garden. So I'm gonna stick to spices that you can buy at the grocery store. Number one, basil, Osimum basilicum. So first of all, basil is a good source of vitamins and many of the vitamins actually are antioxidants themselves. But what I'm gonna be concerned with is some of the other chemicals that are found in various herbs that are considered to be antioxidants. I have come up with these little graphics here with a list of antioxidants. I'm calling these the antioxidant profile, but I'm not pretending that these are exhaustive. Not every herb is gonna have these chemical constituents in equal amount. Maybe your basil plant doesn't have very much rutin in it, or maybe it doesn't have any geraniol. I'm not sure if that's possible or not, but my point is just sometimes it depends on how the plants are grown, what weather conditions were like, how they were harvested, how the extract was harvested, how it was stored. Many things can affect these various herbs. And as we move through the list, you'll see some similarities. Eugenol, for example, is one that shows up on this one. Camphorol, quercetin, often bundled with vitamin C, rosmarinic acid, which will show up later on in rosemary in particular. I'm also going to appeal to journal articles, and I've done this before in other videos. So, for example, here you have an article, Antioxidant Activity of Spices, and that is from the journal Antioxidants. So they specialize in this, and many of these are available online through PubMed. You can see the URL for this particular article, and most of the time I think that I have included the URL for the various articles that I am referencing. Another book you might consider adding to your library is Prescription for Nutritional Healing. And this book, which you're looking at, the fifth edition, which I actually own, is a fantastic book. It starts with introductory sections on antioxidants, minerals, vitamins. But there's also an extended section titled Herbs and Their Uses, where the author goes through various herbs, plants, vegetables, fruits, and actually gives you the chemical components, at least in general categories, and what those chemical components are known for and used for. 
But in many cases, we're going to be talking about the essential oil. The major component, eugenol, has the highest antioxidant activity, according to this article anyway. And it's important to note that in some cases, the activity of an antioxidant can't be explained solely by the presence of the compound. So in other words, there's not so much a reductionist explanation, according to some researchers. There's actually a synergism between all the components. So in other words, sometimes it's not just eugenol, but it's eugenol in conjunction with all of the other chemicals you saw in that previous slide that makes it as potent as it is. Bay leaves, number two. Bay leaves exhibited antioxidant activity, which is why they made the list. You can see my list for bay leaves is a little bit less expansive than it was for basil, cineol being the primary one. Once again, these are not exhaustive, but natural product research, the peer reviewed journal has the article antioxidant and antibacterial activity of essential oil and extracts of bay laurel. And of course it's called Laurus nobilis. And sometimes it's referred to as bay leaves, bay laurel leaves. The essential oil is a rich source of natural antioxidants. Inferent number three is black pepper, Piper nigrum or Piper nigra. This one is really interesting. I'm fascinated that this is on the list because even people who don't have a collection of herbs and spices probably have a salt and pepper shaker. And so it's somewhat amazing to me that literally pepper, regular pepper that you can get in a pepper shaker may have many salubrious qualities. And especially if we're talking about antioxidants, it might be wise to just start to develop a taste for it if you don't have one already and just kind of sprinkle it on your food because of the health effects that it can have. So it's first of all, rich in antioxidants, the most potent chemical constituent supposedly is piperine. But you can see here a brief little profile that includes other things like terpenes, camphene, and some other chemicals, limonene, which will crop up repeatedly. Pinene is gonna show up in other herbs that we'll survey. Black pepper, beside being an antioxidant, also has antimicrobial potential. It has gastroprotective effects. It's not just black pepper. The piper species has a number of different plants. This article alone lists Indian long pepper, and they mentioned something called piper galliatum, which translates to helmeted pepper. The piper genus contains about one to 2,000 species of plants. Piperine not only is a good antioxidant, but it actually helps specifically reduce high fat intake induced oxidative stress. Obesity and consumption of high fat diet are both known to be risk factors or increased risk for Alzheimer's disease. I get into that further in my video, Sugar and Alzheimer's. It's also a primary candidate for multi-target Alzheimer's disease therapy. If you want to get more into acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, I have a separate video just on that. Number four, cayenne. Capsicum annuum, really rich in antioxidants. Some of the main ones include ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, tocopherol, which is vitamin E, and capsaicin. One of the things cayenne is known for is its anti-diabetic effect. Diabetes may increase a person's risk of Alzheimer's disease. Some people might have in their starter pack a spice called paprika. Now, I am not a chef, so this is not a culinary observation. From our standpoint as an antioxidant, they are both very close because paprika has a variety of compounds, including vitamin A, capsaicin, and some of the other carotenoids, same as cayenne, and it's rich in antioxidants. You can see some validation of this in the article Binding Antioxidant and Anti-Proliferative Properties of Sweet Paprika. Weather conditions, the ripening stages of the fruit are going to impact the chemical constituents. And this is specifically, this point is made with reference to paprika. However, it applies to almost any of the herbs we're gonna survey. Cinnamon is number five, Cinnamomum barum, loaded with with antioxidants according to Healthline. Here are a few of them. Tannins, eugenol, limonene. Antioxidant effects are similar to cardamom, which I cover in the next video. Number six, coriander. Now coriander and cilantro are the same plant. They're both the coriandrum sativum plant. And some people in some contexts probably use the words coriander and cilantro as strict synonyms. But the way I'm using it is coriander is referring to the seeds of the plant whereas cilantro is referring to the aerial parts, the leaves. In the next video, I'm gonna get in cilantro, but in this one, we're gonna talk about the coriander seeds. They have potential as natural antioxidants. Here are some of the antioxidants on the profile, including borneol, which we'll get into later, caffeic acid, quercetin, rutin, some of the tocopherols, so again, that's vitamin E, vanillic acid. Coriander seeds not only possess antioxidant properties, but they're also anti-hyperglycemic. See again my video on sugar. Number seven. Cumin or cuminum siminum. Cumin, potent antioxidant, has constituents including beta carotene, cineol, limonene, and it happens to be an excellent stand in for coriander. So if you don't have coriander, but you do have cumin, 
you can expect that not only is it going to be substitutable from a culinary standpoint, according to Healthline, but it also has the ability to be used as a stand-in from the standpoint of the antioxidant profile. According to this article, cumin has antioxidant properties, and because of that, it has anti-stress potential but interestingly, especially for the focus of this channel, it also has comprehensive memory enhancement potential. Number eight, garlic, allium sativum. Garlic has an antioxidant profile that is very unique, and we'll get to that in just a moment, but I wanted to point out that sometimes these plants have antioxidants inside them, and when you eat them or sprinkle them on something and ingest them in some way, those antioxidants from the plant get into your body and your body's able to use them. In other cases, the method of action is that the plant elicits a particular effect within the body. So for example, here it says that garlic increases antioxidant enzymes in humans. Cinnamon was another one that helps to activate antioxidant enzymes in the body. Garlic's very unique chemical contribution is allicin. It is a very potent antioxidant among other things. Garlic also has antibacterial potential. Not only is it available as a dry spice, but you can also, of course, obtain it in bulbs. You can use a garlic press, so it's very versatile. And it has not only antioxidant, antimicrobial, but also antibacterial effects. And really, these are so well established that the Food Science and Biotechnology Journal really resorted to sort of a debate as to whether or not aged garlic or fresh garlic was more potent. And in their estimation, it's the aged stuff that kind of edges out the fresh. You can find out much more about garlic in my video, 10 More Brain Health Herbs, which I did as the second part of a three-part series on the herbs for Alzheimer's disease. Number nine, ginger, Zingiber officinale powerful anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, just like turmeric, which I'll get to at the very end, high in gingerol, according to Healthline, and gingerol is one of its many antioxidant components. It also has borneol, quercetin. I will try and post these on the website, alzheimersproof.com, so you can get a better look at the actual profiles if you're interested in the chemical components. Just like with garlic, ginger is available as a rhizome. You can get the root, you can cut it up, make it into tea, make your own spice. One of the interesting things here, and I'll point it out with respect to this biological research article on garlic, ginger, and cayenne. They studied them in tandem. First of all, they had the effect of reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease, the fat deposition in the arteries, bacterial infections, inflammation. They were anti-diabetic. They helped to bring down cholesterol. Alzheimer's and cardiovascular disease share common genetics, according to this Science Daily article. Heart disease is linked to dementia. Fat deposition in the arteries can increase Alzheimer's pathology. And evidence has accumulated that high cholesterol may increase your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. And you can see my video on sugar and Alzheimer's for an introduction. The article authors also mentioned that it is believed that when multiple antioxidants are used in combination, they prevent vulnerability to other agents and synergistically cool their antioxidant properties. So in other words, they amplify each other. Maybe you don't want to mix garlic, ginger, and cayenne. Maybe you do. I don't know. Depends on your recipe and taste, I suppose. At the same time, you should be aware that that kind of synergism is potentially available for any of the herbs that we survey. And for more on ginger in particular, see 10 more brain health herbs. Black mustard, brassica, nigra, this is number 10. Mustard contains antioxidants according to Healthline. It's not just a spice, but it's also a condiment. It's used around the world, one of the most popular and widely used, in fact. Antioxidant profile includes carotene, like we find in carrots, camphorol, which we've seen before. Various different concoctions are available for what we tend to refer to as the condiment mustard. So you might just have the mustard seeds, but if it's mixed with other chemical constituents, so for example, vinegar, I think, and I'm not a chef, I don't prepare these, it can change the nutrient profile and the healthiness of these things. So ballpark mustard, for example, is probably not as good for you as the regular mustard seeds, even though it's probably tastier. Bear that in mind if you're interested in mustard. It actually also also has the ability of being relevant in diabetics because it improves glucose tolerance. Number 11, nutmeg, Myristica fragrans. This is an interesting one. Nutmeg, first of all, has an abundance of antioxidants, according to Healthline, that's why it's on the list, and those include caffeic acid, various catechins, and a unique chemical called myricidin, 
The freeze-dried water extract of the nutmeg plant was an efficient free radical scavenger, which of course means it was an efficient antioxidant. And it not only is promising with respect to that, but it's also being considered as a cancer therapy. In the Middle Ages, it was used to end unwanted pregnancies, which makes it an abortifacient, at least potentially. You want to be mindful of it and be careful. According to the Medical Journal of Toxicology, there is such a thing as nutmeg poisoning, and the toxic effects are supposedly due to something called meristocin oil. It's not that these poisoning cases are common. They're, they're rare, and they tend to involve teenagers just horsing around. So you don't have to necessarily worry if you follow a recipe, but nutmeg is probably one of those you're going to be real careful of. It's not exactly sure how much of the stuff is required in order to cause some of these nasty effects like hallucination, nausea, vomiting. Here you see reference to one teaspoon. New York Times article references two tablespoons or more, so it's a considerable amount. Maristocin, I should also point out, is in other plants, including black pepper, but maristocin is certainly most common in nutmeg, and it's available there in the highest concentrations. You're talking about a maristocin content in fresh nutmeg, maybe of around 2.6%, according to the math in just the little Wikipedia blurb here. That would be about 26,000 parts per million. Whereas black pepper, on the other hand, has a maristocin content that's negligible. Here you see the allied maristic acid only has a few hundred parts per million, whereas piperine, which is one of the primary constituents of black pepper, can range all the way up to 90,000 parts per million. So in black pepper, really not so much of an issue but in nutmeg, especially in essential oil, the maristocin content might be 12% or more. So take care. Oregano, number 12, Oregonum vulgare. Powerful antioxidants, including carvacrol, caffeic acid, again, myricetin, quercetin, rosmarinic acid. This should be a delight, as it says here in this Science Daily article for pizza lovers and Italian food connoisseurs, because it turns out that herbs in the oregano family have some of the highest antioxidant activity of any plants available widely. That activity can be three to 20 times higher with oregano, and marjoram is related, and I'll get to that in part two. So it's a very potent antioxidant, rosemary, salvia, rosmarinus, potent antioxidant, including rosmarinic acid and rosmanol. Antioxidants are present in the extra and in the essential oils, you should be aware that the kind of extract, the mode of extraction, how it was stored, are all going to have to do with the potency. A couple of the most important constituents are the rosmarinic acid and the carnosic acid. I have a separate video dedicated to rosemary, and rosemary is in my top five Alzheimer's herbs of all time. Sage, salvia officinalis, this is number 14. Loaded with antioxidants, it also has rosmarinic acid like rosemary, but it also has salvianolic acid, which which is unique to the salvia plant. If you want a more detailed list for any of these herbs, then I would invite you to do a little bit of research on PubMed because many articles are going to specify more of the constituents than I specify. Sage has a tremendous antioxidant potential. Sage shows up on 10 more brain health herbs. In the Journal of Agricultural Food Chemistry, we can read that various chemical components from the extracts of both sage and thyme exhibited remarkably strong activity comparable to that of alpha tocopherol. Alpha tocopherol is the most active form of vitamin E and it is a powerful antioxidant. One article, possibly from an unreliable website, I don't recognize that, dsm.com, but it refers to vitamin E as nature's most powerful antioxidant, which is probably not far from the case. So it's rather interesting that sage and thyme in combination rival vitamin E in antioxidant potency. And that moves us to thyme, number 15, thymus vulgaris. Powerful antioxidant, essential oil has antimicrobial properties as well. Certainly it's available as a dried herb. You can even get it as a fresh herb. Includes borneol, which we're going to talk about presently, thymol, which is another one. And its activity actually as an antioxidant is very much due to thymol and carvacrol. Depending on the kind of experiment and the use that these antioxidants were put to, you'll see that thymol and carvacrol in time are referenced as moderate antioxidants, significant antioxidants. In some cases, their potency was so great that even the waste extract could be used as an antioxidant, which is why at least one study in this journal, Molecules, said that thyme, in fact, was the best antioxidant, at least out of the five that they surveyed, the other four being bitter orange, Mediterranean cypress, Tasmanian blue gum, which is a form of eucalyptus tree, and fennel, which I will get into in part two. And you can read about that in antioxidant and anti-acetylcholinesterase activities of some commercial essential oils. Which brings us to another aspect of time. We've touched on acetylcholinesterase before in this video, but suffice it to say that thymol and carvacrol both 
can function as acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Time has another component, delta-3 carine, which was the most effective acetylcholinesterase inhibitor amongst the chemicals in time. Now, I don't want to get into acetylcholinesterase inhibition in this video. I have at least three other videos where I get into it. But I do want to say something about borneol. So borneol has shown up in a number of herbs that we've surveyed. And it's actually reputed to help the brain distribute various particles and nanoparticles from other chemicals. So borneol itself has antioxidant properties, but in this experiment that Science Direct points us to with Hooperzine A, which is an Alzheimer's treatment derived from the club moss plant, the Hooperzine A distribution was greatly improved when it was combined with borneol. So borneol improves brain targeting, especially when it is co-administered with various other nanoparticles. For example, Uperzine A, it can actually be used as a transport system for various drugs. It's a delivery mechanism for getting other chemicals into the brain beside just being an antioxidant itself. Many of these herbs also include vitamins. We kind of mentioned it earlier. Thyme is a significant source of vitamin C. According to Healthline, 28 grams, one ounce of fresh thyme provides 45 milligrams of vitamin C, which is about 50% of the daily allowance. You might not consume that much thyme at once. However, you should be aware that many of these herbs can deliver some vitamin content. On the website Nutrition Data, we can see the various herbs ranked in terms of vitamin C content in particular. Fresh thyme comes in very close to the number one spot. Cayenne pepper is on there, paprika, dried versions of some of the herbs, dried basil, rosemary. Suffice it to say that every one of the herbs that I am surveying in this video is on this list somewhere, which means in addition to the other antioxidants that these herbs have, they also have vitamin C. Vitamin C is vulnerable to heat destruction, so any kind of pasteurization or processing can cause the vitamin C content to diminish. Final installment, number 16, turmeric, curcuma longa. First of all, turmeric is an Ayurvedic herb, potent anti-inflammatory. That's what it's mainly known for, but it is also a potent antioxidant. Its constituents include eugenol, which we've encountered before, carotene, caffeic acid, and then the various curcumins that are unique to turmeric. It's available as a powder. You can get it as the rhizome or the root. It's noteworthy that ingesting the curcumin by itself does not tend to have the same health benefits because it just doesn't get absorbed the same way. In many cases, again, there's the synergistic effect in the herbs where one component is supported by the other ones that are in that herb. Bioparin or the black pepper extract piperine are capable of helping the curcumin be absorbed and they can increase bioavailability by a whopping 2000% according to this article published in the journal Foods. It's in my top five for Alzheimer's disease. And don't forget about spice blends. So the, again, not playing favorites, but spice islands you see here, organic curry. Curry includes ginger, coriander, turmeric, fenugreek, which I'll get into in part two, chili powder here through badia, chili peppers, cumin, garlic powder. There's also Italian seasoning. We're looking at McCormick's offering. And that includes oregano, basil, thyme, rosemary. Sometimes there's an assist from things like marjoram and parsley, which I will get into in the second video, as well as chili flakes, for example, from the cayenne or, or paprika, as well as garlic powder. And then you have poultry seasoning, which can include oregano, sage, and rosemary, but also secondary constituents like black pepper and marjoram. Even if you look at your spice rack and you say, well, I don't have any of these things just by name, but you have a blend. You have an Italian seasoning blend. Well, you, you have more of the herbs than you think then. The point of this is you almost can't go wrong when you have a spice rack, use it because almost everything on that spice rack is going to have some kind of positive health effect if these articles are to be believed. For more information, where can you go? Well, first of all, as I pointed out, PubMed is a rich source. You've got, first of all, an article like this, Antioxidant Activity of Spices, which is dedicated to the topic we've been addressing from a journal that is dedicated to it. There's also books that I ran across just in doing this and other books that I have. Another one is Herbal Medicine biomolecular and clinical aspects. This is almost certainly going to be fairly heavy going. So for lighter introduction, I'm going to toot my own horn, come and see some of the other video offerings that I have if you haven't already. I have a number of videos on alternative treatments, herbs, natural sweeteners. I have a whole video not pictured here on that. And I invite you to take a look. I do want to point out that turmeric is not in the top 10 Ayurvedic brain herbs. You should view top 10 Ayurvedic herbs really as the top 10 that aren't turmeric. And the reason for that is because I cover turmeric in the video, the best herbs for Alzheimer's disease, because it's in my top five. Thank you so much for being with me today, persisting to the end. And I hope you found something of use 
If you did, I ask that you like the video. This did take a considerable amount of effort to put the slides together and things like that. I also would ask that you click the subscription button, click the notification bell to be alerted to new content as it becomes available. And if you think that you know somebody who might also be interested in or to be benefited by this material, I ask that you share the content with them. And look forward again to the second installment of this video where I will get into 16 further herbs and spices that you can add on to these basic 16 in order to give you a very rounded out and robust collection of herbs that can be used for their antioxidant potential in addition to the other properties that we discussed. Thank you so much, be well, and I look forward to seeing you again in another video.